Hi, Jay Pace here from Providence Property Group. In this video, I'm going to give you a deeper understanding of the Providence research methodology. This will give you a glimpse into how Providence has been able to achieve superior results for our clients for more than a decade by locating, assessing, and negotiating the best residential and commercial property Australia-wide. Firstly, we're going to look at the late, great Stephen Hawking, who once said that, the greatest enemy of knowledge is not ignorance, it is the illusion of knowledge. Now, I'm sure that you'll know many people in your life whom possess the illusion of knowledge. And the greater problem here is that these aren't just people at the family barbecue. These are people whom write articles, have radio shows and television programs. So in our opinion, Stephen's message is beware of who you receive your information from even if it's yourself. And there's always more knowledge to be acquired. New information transforms the way that we invest. It actually allows us to evolve from an average to sophisticated investor. And with the birth of the internet and other technologies, as a research company, Providence has been able to use the increasing amount of accessible data to create wealth through property smarter. So it's truly amazing when you actually think about it on a timeline, how far technologies come. I mean, the internet, which I'm communicating with you right now, it wasn't introduced into Australia until two, uh, 1989. And that was in June 1989 by a company called Pe Pegasus Networks. And until 1996, the whole of Australia still didn't have the internet. Smartphones were not introduced until 2010. Google Maps they weren't launched until 2005. Imagine trying to get somewhere these days and throwing somebody a Gregory Street directory. I mean, that's not happening anytime soon. Uh, try and get a millennial to figure that thing out. I mean, realestate.com.au, that didn't go live until 2002. And NAPLAN scoring systems, which significantly drives sub suburban population growth, that wasn't introduced until only 2009, just 10 years ago. So the reason that I'm pointing out all these milestones is because it's so important to understand that research is key. Now, going into our research, we have a three-tiered research methodology, and we look at things from a macro, micro, and property perspective. So whether we're looking at a an established commercial property, uh, residential property, industrial property, or even a new build, a new development that a client wants to get into, that particular property must go through these three research tiers uh, in order for us to say yes to it. So if our clients are, you know, are, are able to achieve an extra 1% or 2% more growth per year based on this research, that's going to equate to hundreds of thousands of dollars over a 20-year period. Now, a good example going into the, the macro perspective, and I'll break these down for you, is looking at cycle timing. And that's really important when it comes to places like Perth, as a great example. And between 2003 and 2006, we were working with a small group of private clients and we placed them in stock in, in the Perth area. And they did very, very well. And that was taking us taking advantage of a huge offshore shift of the urbanization of China. And that was a move from a farming to a manufacturing culture. And that had a huge impact on commodities and, uh, and obviously Perth itself. So one of the key things that we're always looking for is what we like to call the effortless advantage. And this is the uplift that you get by buying within close proximity to a multi-billion dollar project, a new train line, a new road that cuts time travel, um, a multi-billion dollar mixed use urban renewal project, a gentrification center, etc. anything like that. So the infrastructure going into the Hills District over the last few years, uh, like trains, roads, um, stuff like that, that's what moves markets. So in addition, we consider all of these factors when looking for growth. If yields are going up, capital growth usually will follow at some stage. So in our research, we start at our macro level. And when we're doing that, we're looking at globally, nationally, and a state level for opportunities. Firstly, let's look at globally. Well, we look at what's going on around the world that could benefit one city over another. And remembering the mining boom in Australia and the growth that obviously drove Perth and the Perth property market, that was a result of the urbanization of China. So the growth of the Chinese cities 
was a, a result from the population being moved from rural areas into city living and from ag agrarian culture, so agriculture, to factory work. And we were investing in Perth in 2002, 2003, 2004, and we more than doubled our money in only a few years. Now, yes, there's been a little bit of a pullback in Perth prices, but that happens with every single market as we're just starting to get right now with Sydney um, over the past two years after this huge boom that we've had from 2011 to around 2017, we're seeing a pullback there. And it's very important to see the veracity of that pullback. How much is it affecting the market? How quickly is it moving? And that helps us to understand when we believe the cycle timing is going to be correct again to get into that. And for more on cycle timing, our director and co-founder Simon Harris has done a really fantastic video on that. He's the expert when it comes to property cycles. So please be sure to jump on our website and have a look at that at providenceproperty.com.au. So back to the macro side, we're looking for high level themes or trends. It could be something going on that could trigger an increased demand for certain products or services basically around Australia. And at that time, it was definitely the commodity sector, which was coming mainly out of Western Australia about a decade ago. And that was the urbanization of China. So that is a macro uh, statistical data that we need to draw upon. Next, let's look at the micro section. Uh, this is when we start reviewing uh, things like cities, councils, and suburbs. So we're zooming in a little bit more. And we're looking for areas with the best growth potential. And we're looking for positive changes in population, infrastructure investment, employment, and income growth. So we might look at a suburb like Melbourne, for example. So let's move to the East Coast and Collingwood and look at the median household income for that particular suburb of Collingwood versus Greater Melbourne. We can look at the age demographic straight down to interesting factors and very important factors like the sexual orientation of inhabitants within a suburb. Now, don't don't get that wrong. Um, you might be thinking, why is Jay talking about sexual orientations? Well, if we know that the suburb has one of the largest LGBTQ communities in Victoria, our research would then believe us to, to see that the suburb's going to have a very high contingent of double income, no kids. Now, as an investor, if you've got what like to be referred to as dinks um, in your property, this is very, very important because this has been a very strong growth factor for property prices in areas where, you know, in Sydney, like Potts Point, Elizabeth Bay, Darlinghurst, Newtown, etc. And we identify the areas we like by examining these micro factors and more. Now we're going to have a quick look at the property. What, what do you need to look at when it comes to a property? There's so much information. So what we're looking here is we put the microscope over various properties and we review all these factors and more. Obviously, in order to figure out which property suits our client best, we need to create a purchasing criteria. And that's all part of our process at Providence to help you get an understanding of your goals and circumstances. Now, we pay a lot of attention to development and the building quality in a suburb. And we review dozens of different elements from rental appraisals, rental appeal, mortgage valuations, upkeep and holding costs, all the way to exit and resale strategy. Now, this means that our clients at Providence only get the very best in opportunities. Now, almost wrapping up here, uh, our three-tiered research structure is essential for us to use the most accurate numbers available, which we then feed into our property investment analysis tool, which is just a very fancy calculator, which basically allows us to take a look at all of the debits and credits that you'll receive from the purchase of this property, including things like stamp duty, bank fees, solicitor fees, etc. Um, management fees, all of those, and then tell you what the property is either going to make you or cost you per week, post-tax and pre-tax from a holding perspective, and then from a capital growth perspective and a rental yield perspective over a 40-year period based on statistical data that is from proven sources. So very important when it comes to looking at the future. Lastly, we're going to look at the Providence Property report. So all of that information goes into an executive summary. It goes into an investment overview. We then look at the property itself originally, when it was built, what the project was, um, if it's a project itself or if it's just a standalone home, the demographics of the area, the floor plans of that property, whatever council has on, on hold, 
um, any stimulus for that particular area that's going to obviously affect that property in a very positive way. Comparable sales, other properties in the area, what we looked at, what we did like, what we didn't like. Um, you're always going to get a few properties that are close, but it's those minute details that help us go, this one is a clear, clear winner. Well, that's basically all I wanted to go through today. Please don't hesitate to jump onto the Providence website for more videos and articles and contact us today so that we can discuss how we can help you reach your property goals in the future.